Hey guys, how you doing? This is Juan with Liberty Graphic Designs. Today we're gonna be decorating soccer uniforms. Don't go anywhere. I said soccer uniforms, they're not uniforms. They're actually just shirts, just jerseys. I got the numbers ready, but we need to put a logo on these jerseys. I'm not gonna make it out of vinyl, so we're gonna make a patch to put on these jerseys, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be cutting the, the, the patches with the laser so we can uh, heat press them onto the jersey. So it's gonna be a fun uh, video. Let's, let's turn the uh, laser on. Let's get everything uh, nice and ready to go so you guys can see how we actually make a logo. Not how we make the logo, how we make the patch because I already created the logo. They actually brought me the logo but I had to you know do some tweaking to the logo and that's already done. It's already been printed. Um, the sublimation's already been printed. All I gotta do now is cut the actual patch itself and then sublimate the patch and then obviously put all these numbers, names and numbers on the jersey and the patch. Let's go over here to the, to the laser. And this is the uh, logo that we're gonna be putting on it. Again, like I said, it's already been uh, printed. This is sublimation pa paper. For those of you that don't know, uh, or you guys are gonna ask me what kind of sublimation paper is that? What kind of sublimation printer? All of that good stuff. I have an Epson F6370 uh, and that's what I print with. So this is how wide the printer actually prints. It's a 44 inch printer. The paper that I'm using is uh, um, a text print uh, from Bieber paper. That's the paper that I'm using and it's a tacky paper. And the patch material that I'm gonna be using on this video, it's gonna be from stalls. This is the um, PS, it's called PS Twill or pressure sensitive twill. If you guys wanna get it, you can get it from uh, uh, stalls. I hate stalls, but you know, they got some really good products. So this, that's what we're gonna be using. Again, PS, and it's called PS for pressure sensitive. It's got some gummy, gooey glue in there. It's really cool, really very nice material. I gotta hurry because my laptop is about to die and I don't have the charger here. The charger is like way over there. So let me turn everything on. The laser gets pretty loud. So you're just gonna see when this is gonna be cutting the actual patches. Again, because my laptop is about to die. I'm pretty sure you can still hear me. But it, it does get a little loud. And all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna load this material behind the laser. I'm only going to use a small piece, it's not going to be a lot, but I do need to um, make sure that I do have enough. So one of the things we do with this laser, see how it's lifting up? I don't know if you can see it or how good you can see it, how it lifts, it's lifting up. What I do is I put a piece of tape, just like right there, to hold it down. And this is just so when the laser is cutting, the material is not going anywhere again we're only going to need a little small piece of the material we're going to be cutting about 22 uh, logos or yeah logos so what i'm going to do real quick is i'm going to do a trace make sure that i have the uh, material position and just like exactly where i want it and that's what you see the laser doing right now so there you go i just wanted to make sure that i have enough material to cut all those 22 uh, patches. And it looks like we do. Nice, so now we're actually gonna turn the actual laser on and we'll send the job. And now you'll see the laser starting to cut. We're gonna stop that because it's a little too strong. It's a little is very strong. Okay, this one is still gonna be a little strong, but it's gonna be a lot faster.
See how all those mulch is accumulating over there? The reason for that is because the, uh, the material rolled back and it's not, letting the, it's not letting the smoke go through. So I'm gonna grab this ruler, I'm gonna roll it back. That way the smoke has somewhere to go. And then we can restart. See now the smoke is just gonna go right there. So there you have it, the laser is done. All I gotta do now is collect these patches. And this is one of the ways that we make patches. You just cut them with the laser. It's very simple. Super easy, because I don't do anything. The laser does everything for me. Just like so. So now we're gonna sublimate this, but before we sublimate them, we have to put them on the actual sublimation paper. Okay, so now we're gonna sublimate this. And let me show you the steps that I do to sublimate this. So now that I have them ready to be sublimated, what I gotta do, even though the material that I'm using is tacky, I wanna be able to flip it over when I go to sublimate them because this material is a little thicker, plus it actually has a carrier in the back, remember, the, remember at the beginning I was saying that the name is called PS Twill? Well, it does have a carrier in the back and that carrier does not need to come off when you go to sublimate it. It will not hurt it. You will not destroy it. it, it can, you can easily um, sublimate the patch with the carrier being on it. You cannot see it because maybe you can uh, because it's clear. So we're gonna leave it there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this in um, smaller pieces where I know it's gonna fit in, in, my, in my heat press, but that long. So maybe I can cut another one. So now when I, when I went to print this, I actually printed slightly bigger than the patch itself. That way when I lay it on the patch, I'm gonna have a little extra uh, bleed. That way we, ha we have a nice um, sublimation. So that's what this little cardboard here comes in play. I put this on top of this cardboard box and we're gonna use mist adhesive. And this is where you can get it. Uh, I get it at resupply. Uh, three, this is 380, yeah, 380 mist adhesive. And all I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna spray it just like it says, a mist. You don't wanna spray too much, just about that much. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adhere my patches onto the, um, onto the material that I just sprayed with that spray adhesive. So now that we have everything ready to go, uh, like I said, you know, I cut some extra patches just in case, you know, you never know when you're gonna mess up. But anyways, we have an, enough patches in here for the entire uh, set. Cause there's only 15 jerseys and I, I think I did like 22 of them, 20 or 22, something like that. And then I cut 24 again, you know, I don't know why. Anyways, now that they're ready to go, Let's go into the uh, heat press and sublimate them. So there you go, that's so you can see what are we gonna be sublimating on or how long in the temperature. I'm gonna be sublimating for three. It's usually at 365, right now it says 364, but I'm gonna be sublimating 
for 35 seconds. This is what I was talking about. I printed the actual logo with the and, uh, bleed just so I can have enough room in there to place my, my logos, I'm sorry, my patches. But that's gonna transfer onto my, to my um, uh, press and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of, uh, this is test print. If you have um, butcher paper, go ahead and use, use um, I'm sorry, use uh, butcher paper. And the reason why I sprayed them with adhesive is because I gotta do this, you know, flip them upside down. And if, if I don't spray them with adhesive, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So again, we're gonna be sublimating at 365 for 35 seconds. So that's it for sublimation. And if you guys wanna see what they look like, this is the first ones that we sublimated. And if you notice, it has, I don't know if you can see that sheen in the, uh, on the video, but that's because the carrier is still on. And let's see what they look like. So there you go. Now, if you notice like on this ones right here, I noticed that they're kind of dull. I could have left them there for, um, you know, another 10 seconds or so. You can do that. And before you can actually peel them back, you can check your work. Let me see if I can get this one. So before you peel them off, check and see if you like the color that you're seeing. And if you do like it, then see how this one looks better than the other one is because this one the press was already hot so i like that i'm just going to use this one because remember i made 22 and i only need 15. so i got more than enough so i need to lower this temperature i almost forgot but i need to lower it back to 320. it don't have to be that high because now we're going to start applying applying the, uh, what do you call it? The patches and the names and the numbers. And now that we have everything ready, uh, all we gotta do now is start actually putting everything onto the shirt, right? So in this case, when I when I got, I already took the adhesive or the uh, carrier on this one. That's why you see it sticking to my finger. Let me show you one that it, that it still has the, um, that it still has the carrier. So with the carrier, see it's, it's not sticky. But once we remove the carrier, and let me show you. The reason why I did it off camera is because the carrier sometimes can get pretty tricky. So there you go, that's the carrier. Once you remove the carrier, see it becomes very, very sticky. And that glue actually is what's gonna adhere to the jersey itself in this case. So let me put this carrier back in place so I can just throw it back over here. And usually when I have patches like this, when I make my own patches, I like to do the patches last. So what I would do in this case, I will actually go through the list of the um, jerseys that I gotta do. For example, the first one is gonna be um, uh, Josue at number 11, and this is gonna be a large. So we actually have the right shirt. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna show you the way that I do everything, and the reason why I do it this way. So we place the shirt right there, and then I use one of these jigs, and these jigs are really, really helpful, especially when you have to do names and, num and numbers. I don't have my youth right now, the youth, um, what I call it, jig, uh, the alignment jig, but this one will help us just as good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it up a little higher because I don't wanna have my name too low. And then if you notice all these numbers right here, I'm gonna line up number seven on the seams. That way I know I'm exactly in the center. And Josue was number 11. And I already got everything piled up in here, ready to go. So first we gotta do his name, right? Not the number. So we're gonna do everything at the same time. And that was my press telling me that it's ready back at 320, not at 365. So now when you take Josue, you know, you can actually fold it in half meet both of the ends, bring it over, and bend it right there. That way you know that that's your center. Then the jig has a center. Just meet both of those up, kind of like that. And the name will stay in place exactly where you want it. Just like that. So now we're gonna bring it down to the edge of the name. 
and we're gonna place the number. Again, you can do the same thing with the number. Fold it over, create a crease. If you wanna create a crease over here, just like that. Bring it up to that center. And you know that you're dead center with the number and the name. Now, if you, if you, if they tell you that you have to position the number within so many inches or at a certain distance, I'm the only one that sells this with the ruler. Let me bring the ruler so you can see it. So in case the customer tells you that they want the number and the name within one inch, so you place your ruler at the bottom of the name. I'm sorry, your, your um, alignment jig at the bottom of the name. And then this is very sticky, right? I'm using, just so you guys know, I'm using uh, Easy Weed, Caesar Easy Weed. So let's say they wanted one inch from the bottom of the name. So we're gonna align this zero on the uh, ruler with this curve of the jig. Let me bring it over to the center, just like so. We're gonna align that. So the number two is gonna be at the bottom of the uh, jig. So now I'm gonna align it with the number two, just like so. And if they wanted my number to be a one inch, then I can just align the number of the one inch mark. Again, with the uh, easy weed, it's kind of tricky to do this because it's so sticky. But I'm gonna try to do it. There you go. Just like that. And now, now you know that your number is exactly a one inch from the bottom of the name and, um, and it's gonna be center. Again, because you got all these lines, like right now, let me center it back up, because I'm not center right here. There you go. Now I'm center, and I'm one inch from the bottom. Or you can take this off, right, and measure it from there, and you'll be where you wanna be. Now, another trick I wanna show you with this, right here, this is Caesar Easy Weed, okay? Uh, one trick that I wanna do is normally I have my press, this press has a pre-press and it has an actual press. I'm gonna bring it down so I can set up the press or the pre-press. Let me set it up. So what I'm gonna do is I already set the pre-press to go off at two seconds. Caesar Easy Weed will stick in one second, but I'm gonna have it at two seconds. So you'll see what I'm talking about. You bring it down, press goes off, and then you can peel the carrier out, just like that. And then take this one out. Yes, Caesar Easy Weed does that. In one second, it'll adhere to the actual garment. But the only reason why I do that is so I can remove the, gar the carrier and now all my pressure and all my heat is against the actual number or the vinyl in this case, getting a better adhesion on the garment. So we're gonna press it for 12 seconds. There you go, it's 12 seconds. Now your number and your name, it's in there. Completely under, it will not come off. And now for the uh, patch. So now the patch, basically you want the patch to be four inches down, four inches over, that will be the center of your patch. This is gonna be the first time I'm actually showing how to use this jig. This jig, if you notice, it has obviously the center. The, the one that you guys, if you guys end up buying the one from my Etsy store, you're not gonna have these holes right here because this hose was a, tr a prototype. This is the actual prototype. The one that you guys buy has a lot more information than this one. Anyways, but you see there's a center line and then there's a, a right chest and it has the lines and then it has a left chest. In this case, we're gonna be positioning the logo on the left chest. So the way you use this jig, you put that rounded edge right there against the bottom of the collar. The from the bottom of the collar down to this edge right here is two inches. That's why I was saying, place your ruler at the two inch mark. That will, that will zero out everything. Um, and we wanna be four inches down, four inches over, and that's where the center of our logo is gonna be. So in this case, we're gonna be about right there. Now, the reason why I did two inches down, two inches over is because if you notice, I just placed the top of my logo and that ended up exactly what I wanted. However, this is a 
um, what do you call it? This is a, a youth shirt, not an adult. If it was an adult, that would have been perfect, but this is a youth shirt. So I'm not gonna use a ruler for that. I'm just gonna bring it over to the center. I guess you can uh, fold it half and pinch it. That way you know. And then this one, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it where I want it. That right there. But I'm making sure that I'm dead center in the patch. Just like that. And with this guy's stalls pressure sensitive twill, it actually adheres in there by itself. See that? It will not fall. So it makes it very, very easy for you to uh, do your pressing. So that will be it. That's all we gotta do. Now, what I gotta do is I have to put a piece of paper up here because I don't wanna transfer the sublimation onto my shirt. I'm sorry, to my um, press. So what I did is I just cut a piece real quick because all I need is to cover that right there. Make sure that it doesn't again transfer over to the press and that's what i'm gonna do and we're gonna we're gonna um do this one for 10 seconds so i have to bring down my press because it's on the pre-press and now it says 12 seconds but i'm gonna press it for 10 seconds that's it so we're gonna remove this you see the sublimation it'll be on my press and i don't want that so make sure you get rid of this and get a new one and that's it your patch is here is ready to go it did not transfer any glue on the back and once this cools down you will not be able to get it off that stuff gets on there really really good so that's how we make um jerseys here at liberty graphic designs just like that so very very easy <laughs> very uh what do you call it it's just it's just a really nice touch to do them like that now on this one, I didn't cut the numbers, but I normally I will put a small number here or either here. And um, that's it, that's it guys. And that is set for this video guys. Uh, I mean, I only need to show you one. It's not like you need to see all 15 of them, right? That's how easy it is for us to create an actual patch, place it on the shirt, and then you guys know how to do this, right? So you know how to cut the vinyl, you know how to cut the, you know, the name, the, uh, number and all that good stuff, but if you take a shirt like this one, let me show you a blank one You know you can take a shirt like this nothing on it and then we decorate it like so So again guys, this is it for this video. Thank you for watching uh, I'm gonna get to finishing the rest of the uniform because they're gonna pick them up in the morning Thank you for watching guys. It was a pleasure like always if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. I do want to apologize for the last video. You'll see it somewhere in here at the end. Uh, my, I wasn't using my microphone and the audio was really, really bad. Again, again I will post the video link uh, somewhere in here at the end of the video so you guys can watch it. It's a really good video, but the audio sucks. Thank you guys, it was a pleasure like always. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ding the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. You don't have to ding the bell, but I will greatly appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. God bless you, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now. Adios now.